In today's video we are going to play Heroes of Might and Magic 3, the board game by Archon Studio, and we are going to show off the solo campaign mode by playing the first scenario in the castle faction called Homecoming. Hi, my name is Klaus, and as I said in the intro, we are playing a solo campaign scenario today, so let's get over to the table where we have already set up the scenario, and let's get started. So here we have the scenario set up and if you want to see how to set up for a solo or class mode game then I will put a link up here in the corner to our how to set up the game video. But there is a couple of notes that we need to go over before we start. First of them is the additional rules and the most important one here is that we have only explored the starting tile and this dungeon tile. The enemy hero has an army of the fourth level and won't move at all. We lose if we lose any combat or haven't defeated the enemy hero for turn 8. And we don't have a soundboard, but we are allowed to recruit and reinforce copper and silver unit. The other small thing is that there is some timed events with an associated story. I won't read up the story, but I will go over the effects. And also all the rounds are resource rounds instead of switching between resource and astrology proclaim rounds. Also, normally you would lose after three rounds by not having a town or settlement, but that is not the case in this scenario. And also, I have chosen to upgrade my halberdiers and marksmen from the feud to the pack side as my starting bonus. Also, be aware that you don't get a difficulty bonus when you're playing solo campaign. Also, because we don't have a town board, we don't have any recurring resources, so each resource round will only get what we have claimed on the board, such as mines or other settlements. But with that, let's get started. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to reinforce my Griffins, paying the 6 cost to reinforce, and that let me flip it to the pack side. Then here we have a third level neutral enemy, so let's just try and see if we can defeat it. So I'm only going to explain the rules once and then we're just going to let the game flow. So when you get into a neutral battle, you will go over and you will flip the corresponding cards. So for a third level neutral encounter on easy, which is the difficulty that I've chosen for this game, we're going to draw one cover and one silver. Then the attacker deploys first with a maximum of five units. So I'm going to bring my units in and I'm going to deploy my Marksmen, my Halberdiers and my Griffins. Then the neutral enemies are gonna be deployed and the rules are they are gonna deploy first the back row with ranged units and then the next row with melee units. And that is an in initiative order from left to right based on my position. So this is how it looks and then the battle starts in initiative order. So if we look here, we can see that the Griffins have the highest initiative of 9, so they are gonna move up. And then we are gonna attack the Minotaur. So the way it works is that you have an attack statistic that you can manipulate with your cards. And these are my hand of 4 cards, and one of those cards is the attack card, which gives me plus 1 to the attack statistic for an attack. And if I had an expert level, I could use it for plus 2. Afterwards, you roll an attack die, which are the red dice, over here that goes from plus one to minus one and you add that as well and then you compare it to the defense of the unit you're attacking subtracting that defense value and that gives you the damage also each unit have special abilities but we'll take that if it comes up so i have actually my griffins i'll put one of my colored cubes on it and then i will roll for the attack so the meter of two defense and four life which means it might be a good idea to play my attack card that gives me a base of four we're gonna roll the die for zero that is four attack minus two that is two damage then because the minotaur haven't retaliated yet which is depicted by a black cube it gets to retaliate and that is just the same as the attack before the special piece here is that we can re-roll minus one on the outcome of the attack dice and that is a zero, that is three damage, and we have zero defense, so that is three damage going through. That is the retaliation, and then it is the next unit. So looking at the initiative order, we can see the next unit is unfortunately the Minotaurs, and they are going to attack the Griffins. So because there's no neutral units, there's no cards to be played. Minus one, it gets re-roll, 
that's a plus one, that is four damage, no defense. That brings us to four. So we flip over the card to the few side. And then we spill over three damage. And now the Griffins get to retaliate. So the Griffin's special ability allows us to do an unlimited number of retaliation attacks. So I'm not gonna put a black cube on it. Minus one for one, two defense, so no damage going through. Next up is the evil eyes or the marksman. So attacker always goes first on time of initiative. And if there's more cards with same initiative, you alternate between the players. So my marksmen are gonna go first. So the first one I'm gonna do as I activate is actually play a spell. So I have the magic arrow spell. And normally for zero power, that will do one damage. But I can power it up using my power card to bring it up to two damage. This damage cannot be prevented in any way. So I am gonna play my magic arrow for two damage on the Minotaurs and that is enough to kill it off. Then my marksman will shoot and they have a special ability as if they attack, if a target is non-adjacent, it can attack again. Another rule is that if a ranged unit attack from the back line to the back line, it gets disadvantaged, which means it rolls two attack dice and uses the worst one. So plus one, plus one, an attack of two, that is three, defense one, that is two damage. And because we're not adjacent, we are allowed to attack again. For a minus one, giving us a one and defense of one, which means nothing happens. Then it is the evil eyes and the ranged units would always attack other ranged units of the same tiers first. Again, there is disadvantage. For a minus one, that is an attack value of one and no defense, so we get one damage. Last up, it is the halberdiers. So they are gonna move three up. So this will have a special ability that when it's targeted by an attack, you can discard a card from your hand that is from our might deck over here. And then you can ignore the attack dice roll result. But let's see, that is a zero, that is three damage. So two goes by and that is enough to kill off the evil eyes and win the battle. After battle, all damage is removed from the surviving units and you get to put them back into your reserves. But if you have flipped from a pack to a few side, it stays that way and needs to be reinforced again. Now the one that battle, we can flag the mine with one of our color cubes and we will immediately get the resource gain as well because we're the first one to flag, giving us one valuable resource. That was one movement point, so we can spend another one. So I'm gonna spend the next one on actually moving over here to the spring. That gives us two effect. First we gain positive morale, which can be used to re-roll or redraw or switch your cards in your might deck and we get an additional movement point for this turn I will show that we're flipping this one back and we're gonna show the positive morale with one of these moral tokens so we get an additional movement points and I can use the next one to explore this field here so we're gonna turn it over and then we are allowed to rotate it in whatever way we would like. When we flip the second tile of level 2 to 3, which this one is, because this was the first one, we are presented with two different paths, the grass path and the snow path, and we get to choose. And the path that we choose will be the top path, and the other one will be the bottom. So I'm going to choose the grass path, and the result of that is that nothing really happens, and we can just continue. So I'm going to spend the next movement point moving into here allowing us to search two for an artifact so we go over here so we can either take this top of the discard pile or we can take the top two cards and choose one of them so let's just search two so we have either ever pouring vial of mercury that gains one valuable when used and you can remove the card to gain two or you can gain five gold or remove this card to gain eight hmm I think we gotta take the endless sack of gold as we can use the money to actually reinforce and that goes directly to our hand which is now these two cards until the next round. That is all our movement points so we go to the next round which is also a resource round. So right now we have only flagged one mine giving us one valuable and then we can discard and draw up to our hand size from our deck. So here we have our current hand and we have our crusader speciality card which does that we can use it to give our selected unit one 
attack or one defense and a double if it's a crusade unit. So first off I'm gonna play the endless sack of gold to gain five additional money. Then I am gonna spend six reinforcing the griffins. Just gonna look at the two units that we are, have not recruited yet so we can recruit the crusades for six and the sealers for eight. So I am gonna recruit the crusaders. So I'm gonna put them down here together with the rest of our units and then we get our movement points back. Also every time you visit a location that is not revisitable you put a black cube. So the fountain here and this artifact as well and these yellow here are borders that we can't cross. So we're gonna move down here to the magic spring and the magic spring allows us to actually look at the top three discard pile that we have on my deck and take one of the cards back on hand. I'm gonna take the endless sack of gold back on hand and play it immediately to get another five gold. That was one movement point. Gonna move here, nothing happens, and then we're gonna move to the trading post. And the trading post will allow us to trade resources, which I'm not really interested in. So that was all our movement points. So let's go to round three, get our movement points back, and we get one valuable, and we get to discard and draw up, draw our last two cards, which give us our special ability card, leadership, which we can use to gain a morale token. So we're gonna spend our first movement point on discovering this style here. And we are allowed to turn it however we will. Also, I forgot when we won the battle against a higher level than ourselves, we were first level, we should gain two experience. It means we are now level two and we are getting one expertise, which allows us to use one of our cards for the expertise effect instead each round. So now we are gonna go to the Leprechaun. And because we're the same level, we still have to fight. So we are gonna go over to the battle board, draw two copper units, place our own four units, and we are gonna get peasants and halberdiers. So the way that these are placed are, we have no ranged units, so we go directly to melee. We go for initiative, left to right. And this is how it looks, and we're ready. So first off is our griffins. They're gonna fly down here and attack for three, which is more than enough to kill off the peasants. Next up in initiative order is the marksmen and they are gonna shoot the halberdiers. And we are not shooting with penalties, so that is just a plain attack for two damage, which means two goes through. And because we're not adjacent, we're allowed to attack again and this time for three, thereby defeating the halberdiers and winning us the battle. As we have now one, we are hard to choose one of these, so we can either get two coins or one valuable. So I'm gonna get two coins. And then for my next movement point, let's see, that is the third because we discovered, then moved, and now we move again. We're gonna go down to the mine and that battle, because it's the same level, only gave half an experience. So this time it's a third level, and that means one copper, one silver. Just like before. So first up, I'm gonna set up my units. I'm gonna set up my marksmen, my halberdiers, my crusaders over here, and my griffins. And then we're gonna show we have halflings, goes here, and crusaders. First, I'm gonna fly three with my griffin and play my attack card with expertise to get plus two thereby giving me a five before the attack die. And that is four, and that is more than enough to kill off those halflings. So no retaliation, we have activated our griffins. And then in next initiative is our marksman who is gonna attack the crusader. So we are gonna roll. Two is not enough, we are allowed to attack again. And one is not enough either. Then we get to the fives and I'm gonna start with my Crusaders moving up to attack the other Crusaders. And I am gonna play my speciality card, giving my Crusaders plus two attack because we can do it twice if it is, or double up if it is a Crusader unit. So we are now attacking with five plus a die. That is six, that is four damage through, and that is enough to defeat the enemy Crusaders, thereby winning the combat. 
because we defeated an enemy that was higher than our own level, we get two points of XP and that makes us level three and that gives us a hand size of five. And that was all our movement points. And of course we flag this gold mine, instantly getting the resource as well. And that is gonna give us another five end of round. So we are now on round four, unless I forgot something, we get our movement points back and we can discard and draw up. So I'm gonna discard the defense, shuffle our discard pile, and now draw up to five. So we have leadership, knowledge, attack, defense, and defense. And we are getting one valuable for our mine over here. And we are getting five gold for the gold mine. So I am gonna spend eight of these to recruit the sealers. And then I'm gonna spend another 10 upgrading the crusaders as well, reinforcing. So for the first movement point, we're gonna go here to the treehouse and that allows us to discover an adjacent tile. And then we are gonna go here, which instantly gives us one XP, making us level four. And that is the maximum for this scenario. And that gives us two expertise. Then we're gonna go to a trading post, not using it. And that is turn. So next round, we are getting five coins again and one valuable. And now that we have all these valuables, we might as well just start by using our first movement point by visiting the trading post that we're standing on. And then we can look up trade. So if we look here, we can see that we can sell our valuables in one to three for coins. So we are gonna get six, 12, which we're gonna spend instantly on reinforcing the sealers. And we are gonna sell for another six coins. That gives us a total of five reinforced units, which is a one that we can recruit. And then we can move down here to the witch shot for the next movement point, which allow us to either remove an ability card from our hand, if there's a card we don't want to affect, to actually optimize our deck, or we can look at the top ability card and put it into our hand or into the discard pile. So let's check. That is estates which we can use to gain gold. So we are gonna take that into the hand and we can spend it instantly to gain another three. And with the last movement point, I am gonna move on to the obelisk, which triggers a new event. And this time it tells us that we are to place our hero on the empty field of the starting dungeon tile, which is over here. We should place a purple cube on every other field other than the starting field and the town field and each Purple cube represents a neutral army, and the field's difficulty is the same as your main hero level, that will be four, and we need to add a few troglodytes to every combat encounter. After we have defeated a neutral army, we can remove the purple cube and place it on our hero card, and we can enter the town and attack the hero when we have two purple cubes. That was all our movement points, so it is round six. We get three movement points one valuable and five coins which we might need if we are defeated or losing units and then it's just to start so we'll go down and try and attack and then we need to add a few struggle lights as well so we are going to deploy our units first so we have halflings again and we have sealers. So sealers are initiative five. So they go second. Then we have rogues and tracklodytes. So they go this. So we are ready to start. And first off is our griffins. So we are gonna go up like this and attack these rogues. So I am gonna play my attack with my expertise. That is five, and that is enough to kill off the rogues. Next up is the halflings and, uh, no, is the sealots actually, which is seven. So they are gonna shoot and they ignore combat penalty against adjacent unit. It is not adjacent unit, so we get penalty. That is three damage, and that is enough to kill off the halflings. Then we go to initiative six. And here we have the marksmen and the crusaders. So marksmen are gonna start and we are gonna try and shoot the sealots up here. 
that is gonna be three damage. They have no defense. And we are allowed to shoot again with special ability. That is gonna be a single damage. That is not enough to kill them off. Which means I now have to hope that my Crusaders are gonna be able to do it. So I will move my Crusaders up and attack the Truckle Lights. And I can reroll every uh, zero that this unit attacked on. Now that I have reinforced, that is five damage for goes through. Killing off the Truckle Lights, which we need again in just a moment. Then it is the Helbadiers gonna move up, attack the Sealots. There's gonna be three damage and that is enough to kill them off. That is gonna earn us our first faction cube. We're gonna put it over here. And then we have spent a movement point and we're gonna spend another one. Of course, we also get the fact that campfire allowing us to roll one resource die. Resource die is here. So we are getting six coins. Then we continue to move down here and try and get another cube and a treasure die as well. And add in the Truckloidites. Giving us Truckloidites, Zombies, the Briefs and Nomads. All of these are melee units, so that is just from the first. And we have two initiative seven, so by tier, Nomads go first. So it's gonna be Nomads, Wraiths, Truckloidites and Zombies. And our Griffins are gonna start with a nine. Griffins are gonna move up and attack the Nomads. For three, which is gonna give two damage out of the total four. That was the nine. Then we have seven starting with the sea lots, and they are gonna attack the rates. With a plus one, that is five. That's enough to kill off the rates. Then we go to our, uh, our other seven, which is the nomads, and they are gonna attack the griffins. For three, should probably play a defense card. We just need to go back. Of course, the Nomad should have attacked the Griffins before. So we're gonna give them the three damage and then they will attack now. And I am gonna play a defense card for expertise, giving plus two defense. That is two, and that is two defense enough to them to survive. They have retaliated. The Griffins have retaliated, but they have unlimited number of retaliations. Then we go to six, and I think we are gonna start off with the Marksmen, and the Marksmen are gonna shoot off the Truckledites. No penalty this time. That is gonna be three, that is two damage, killing off the Truckledites they have activated. And then it is our Crusaders, gonna move up and attack the Zombies. Giving us five, and that is enough to kill off the Zombies as well. So the only thing left now is actually to go and try and kill off these Nomads. So we're gonna move up the Halberdiers and they are gonna attack and we don't really have any cards to play. That is four damage and that is enough to kill them, thereby continuing our onslaught and our way to complete this scenario. So we get another cube and we are allowed to roll on the treasure die. We're getting XP, we can't get any more XP. I'm gonna spend my morale token on re-rolling, giving us a resource die instead. So two valuables. And then I'm gonna call that a turn because we are out of cards and we're gonna need all our strength when we come to this last battle. So round seven, we're gonna get one valuable, five coins, which we don't really need because None of our reinforcement have been downgraded. We are able to discard if we want to or draw up to five. I am gonna just try and draw up, giving us our speciality card and our endless stack of coin. So I will use that right away to get the five coins. And then let's just try out for the final battle. So this time the AI already have their army over here, but I am to place my units first. And then we're gonna take a look at the AI. So they have harpies, boars, sharpshooters, and minotaurs. So sharpshooters are ranged, they're gonna go down here, and that is a nine. And we have harpies, 
Minotaurs are the higher tier of the six initiative. So it looks like this. It is the final battle and because it's against an AI hero, we're gonna use their prepared might deck. But first off, initiative nine is the Griffins. They're gonna move up and attack those Harpies. So let's see. That is enough to kill off the Harpies exactly. So no retaliation and the Griffins have activated. The next up is the Sharpshooters, which are also initiative nine and they will try to attack another unit of the same tier, which is also range, so that is going to be the Sealots. They ignore all combat penalties, so that is a single die, and that is going to be two damage going through. Next we're going to look, and we have the Sealots at seven initiative. Also the Sharpshooters should of course have gotten a card, so they got defense, so nothing happened. So it doesn't manipulate the result, luckily. Then it's the Sealers and we need to try and take down some of these units that haven't done anything yet. So we are gonna shoot on the boss. No comp penalty because we're not shooting on the back line. That is three damage. So that is three damage going through. Not enough to kill the unit, unfortunately. And no retaliation. So next up is the six. I am gonna start off with my marksman. And they are gonna try and shoot those balls. They are not getting any penalty. That is gonna be three damage. That is enough, or else we had another shot. And no retaliation. And then it is the Minotaurs. They are gonna attack adjacent. So that is gonna be the Griffins. And I am gonna play a defense card with expertise to give them two defense instead of zero. That is going to be 5 damage, minus 2, so 3 damage that is just on the brink of them being downgraded. The Griffins are going to retaliate for 2, which is not enough to damage them at all. Then I have my other 6 unit, and that is going to be the Crusaders. They are going to move 3 up and attack that Minotaur, and we are going to use our Speciality card to give them plus 2 attack for a total of 6. Seven, and that is more than enough to kill off those Minotaurs. So that means that the last unit to activate is the Halberdiers, and they cannot do anything else than just move up. Had this been a neutral army, I had to spend another movement point to continue, but because we are fighting an enemy hero, we are just resetting and the cubes and continue with a new turn. So first off again is the Griffins, and the Griffins are gonna move up and attack those sharpshooters that haven't taken any damage yet. That is gonna be two damage. And the sharpshooters are gonna retaliate. I have nothing really to play, so that is just gonna be a retaliation. And that is gonna be two, which is enough to break the griffins and do one damage of overspill. Then next up is the sharpshooters and they are gonna attack the griffins and they ignore all penalties. So that is gonna be three damage flat, and that is enough to kill off my Griffins, unfortunately. Then we have the next one that is gonna be my Sealots, and they are gonna attack, and they have a penalty due to back row to back row. That is gonna be five, that is gonna be five damage, and that is enough to kill off the Sharpshooters, successfully killing off the enemy hero and their army, and thereby winning this scenario. So the only thing to do is actually prepare for the next scenario. And the way you do that is that you take your might deck. And when you have your whole might deck, you start by taking your statistic cards. So there's going to be two attack, one power, one knowledge, and two defense. Then you add your magic arrow spell and your level one speciality. And then you are allowed, and your ability, and then you're allowed to keep up to five of your cards that you have gained during the scenario and I only gained these two artifacts so I'm gonna keep these. That was our playthrough of the scenario homecoming for the castle faction campaign. If you want to see more playthroughs of any questions please write in the comment section below and we will do our best to answer you. Also if you enjoyed the video or found it helpful please consider giving us a like and subscribe. It is really helping the channel grow and it is highly appreciated. But that's all for today's video. Thanks for watching.